Welcome back. In the last week, we had the basic introduction to finite volume time domain method, where we briefly introduced various aspects of this method. We discussed about what are the important ingredients when it comes to the formulation, what are the aspects in which we are talking about it for modeling electromagnetic problems. So, in this week, what we are going to do is we are going to look into the main aspects of computing the fluxes, because the flux function is one of the main factor which defines the accuracy of this method for various uh, electromagnetic problems. So, depending on how we compute the flux, this is going to impact the accuracy. So, with that we will start with this week's uh, second part. So, where the first part will be the discussion of flux function. Remember that I discussed in the earlier module that the flux will be something that we compute across the surfaces. If you are talking about a 2D, this will be the edges which are covering this area. If it is a 3D problem, it will be a surface that is covering the volume, control volume. And then with that flux function, we will discuss quite a bit about what are the different ways in which we can compute that flux. In addition to that, we will also look into the time discretization aspect, because we have not covered so far how we are going to discretize the time, how we are going to go from time step n to n plus 1 to n plus 2 and n plus 3 and so on and so forth. So, time discretization is something that we will cover in this module, because this is going to be slightly different to finite difference method, but still it has a lot of similarities. So, this one we will look into it in this lecture and also we will talk about some basic ideas about domain truncation. I will cover one of the types and of course, in the next lectures we will see more advanced uh, domain truncation techniques. With that we will start with today's lecture. So, we are going to discuss about flux function as to begin with. So, remember in the slide we discussed about uh, flux function in the semi discrete form. So, we have a semi discrete form for the definition of the flux, where the partial derivative with respect to uh, t is equal to the 1 by mu over v i, v is the volume and then we have the sum of all the flux components that are coming. So, we, did, we said that these are the flux components. So, this two things are the flux components and of course, the s k is the value of the surface area uh, in a 3D problem. In a 2D problem, this volume will change into area and then the surface area will change into length of the side. That being said, the, the combined flux is something that we can write it as one vector, so which is given by the value here. So, this thing is the first component will be the flux that is related to the partial derivative with respect to time for the magnetic field and the second one will be with respect to the electric field. So, this is straightforward. So, this is the basic thing that we will be looking into and uh, we have to see how we can go uh, on to compute this one in this lecture. So, I have said in the past that flux is uh, both ingoing and outgoing. So, when you consider a particular problem, for example, you have a triangle and this is your control volume and the values are in the center and this control volume will have fluxes that are going in and out. So, whatever is going out, I mark it in red and there is also fluxes that are going inside. So, we said that the net flux will be the uh, algebraic sum of those ingoing and outgoing flux. So, this is what we have been pictorially mentioned here and uh, one way to do that is to use a scheme that is first order approximation. The first order approximation is called as Goodenough scheme. Let me explain that a little bit in further. What I have is I have two triangles and these triangles are let us say 
the left triangle with the value q l, the barycentric value and the right triangle I draw it with blue color whose value barycentric value is written as q r. So, this is the phase center. So, we are interested in the projection there. So, one easy way of doing that is we can say whatever is on the right will be the value here. So, we say q on the right will be the right value here and q l on the left will be the left value here. This approximation is very crude. As you can see, uh, obviously the value on the Barry center and the value on the face center will not be the same, but still we can say somehow they are the same. So, the consequence of this is basically what I have shown here in the in the slide. So, what is happening is we can say that it is a piecewise constant. We will see in the 2D how it will be in the next slide, but this is a kind of a constant approximation. Whatever is on the left, so here q l is equal to q i and q r is equal to q i plus 1, where i and i plus 1 are nothing but barycentric values on the left and right hand side. And as I have marked here, this is of first order approximation. Another way of doing that is we call it as muzzle scheme is monotonic upwind schemes for conservation law. The word muzzle comes from there. So, this is a kind of a scheme that comes from computational fluid dynamics. As I mentioned to you, the idea of uh, finite volume method itself is coming from computational fluid dynamics and they have been using this for several applications in that domain. So, this monotonic upwind scheme for conservation law or other words uh, called as muzzle scheme is an approximation and this is a second order approximation. So, we will see how it is second order. So, what is happening here is whatever is on the left hand side of this interface will give you certain value, but this value will not just be the value itself, but the gradient. So, what I mean by that is let me explain this further. So, what is happening here is I have a value which is on the left hand side and I have a value which is on the right hand side and I am interested in this point which is the center of the face. So, there is going to be a gradient that we are going to compute between these two points. What I mean by gradient is the slope. The, the value of the function on this one will be taking into account this particular geometrical gradient. So, whatever is there, so it will say. So, this there is a slope here. So, based on that we can compute the gradient between this point and this point, this point and this point. So, the slope will affect on the computation of whatever is going to be computed on the left and right hand side. For example, so q i will take q l will take into account the slope between these two points and slope between these two points. So, when we go in the next slides, we will discuss some improvements to this particular thing, but it is important to know that it is not just equating directly to the left hand side itself or right hand side itself, but we are going to talk about the slope of the thing. So, as you can see in the slide, so this is a second order approximation and uh, when you look at it from a two dimensional point of view, so what we will have is in the case of the Gudanov scheme you will have piecewise constant. So, the triangles will have values which are equal across all the sides based on the value at the center. So, based on that each of the neighboring triangles will have different constant values. So, a slight improvement to that will be the piecewise linear approximation where you will have values which will take into account the slopes. So, you see that it is having a slope function 
within uh, each of the uh, domains and uh, each of the control volumes and uh, in 1 D it will be simply a line instead of a plane. So, here we, we see that both Gudanov scheme and also the muzzle scheme they are quite good for computational fluid dynamics where they have quite a lot of instability. So, in a way having a dissipation what I mean by dissipation you will come to know it in the next slides. So, in a way when the wave decays in its amplitude due to an inaccuracy that is coming from computation of the flux function is good for them and that works very fine when they are using computational fluid dynamics problems. But in our case the solution does not go into instability naturally. So, numerical solutions become unstable, but the physical solution itself is not like that. So, what happens is having any amount of dissipation or inaccuracy that is coming from our way of computing the fluxes should be avoided. So, numerical inaccuracy or uh, instability should be avoided. So, as we said Gudanov scheme is highly dissipative for CEM. So, we do not use that for any particular application. Muzzle scheme is an improvement definitely it has certain improvement, but it is still dissipative. If you if you ask somebody who is working with computational fluid dynamics they will say that well we are happy with it, but uh, people with, uh, with electromagnetics as I mentioned they are not happy with it. So, we have to see how we can improve it. So, what I mean by dissipation is say let us say you have a wave that is going in x direction. So, the line which is in red is actually the exact value the amplitude of the wave does not change should not change, but what happens is when you are trying to use numerical methods due to various reasons what we discussed just now the flux function computed is not accurate. So, it leads to slow decay in the amplitude this is what is called as dissipation to be more specific we call it numerical dissipation. So, that being said we are now going to discuss what are the different ways in which we can improve this. We tried few techniques they work on a case by case basis uh, it is good to know them it is good to know when where to apply when to apply them and uh, in that sense we get an overview of various capabilities both the pros and cons of finite volume time domain method. So, one of the initial schemes uh, I will look into is the centered flux scheme. So, it is also called as flux averaging scheme. So, the centered flux scheme or flux averaging scheme depending on who you are speaking to they mean the same thing and we will see how they are done in the case of electromagnetic problem. So, the second one is a truly upwind scheme. The truly upwind scheme is basically mimicking more or less what muzzle scheme the monotonic upwind scheme is doing but in much more structured way it looks into the geometrical parameters of a particular control volume and takes into account certain aspects. And the last one is the geometrical reconstruction scheme which is a little bit more of an improvement compared to the truly upwind scheme. So, a note I have to mention here is depending on whichever scheme you are using the pros and cons are one is to look into the numerical accuracy that scheme brings, but also we have to pay attention to the computational cost because we do not have to need to do too much uh, computation in order to get a better approximation. So, there is always a kind of a what should I say trade off uh, compared to what kind of numerical method we use to compute the flux versus uh, how much smaller we are going to go in terms of discretization. Uh, and also the better approximations we can get through those new functions. So, that being said in the next uh, parts we will see into how we are going to compute the centered flux, uh, truly upwind scheme and uh, geometrical reconstruction scheme. So, with that I will end this module thank you.